morning and welcome to the Dirty Reaver 2023. My name is Daniel and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the toughest day I've ever had on a bike. Let's go. So here I am on the start line of an event called the Dirty Reaver, a gravel cycling event in Kielder Forest. I'm aiming to do the 200 kilometer event, but spoiler alert, this does not go to plan. This event is advertised as not a race, but when Nico Roche is on the start line and it starts like a third cat crit, I think it absolutely is a race. This is what I'm riding. It is my Canyon Grizzle CFSL8. It's got some Zip 303 wheels, an NRG wax drivetrain, 42 tooth chainring, a 1044 rear cassette. I've got flared bars. I've got clip on aero bars. I've got all the bags you can imagine. I've got cargo bib shorts. I am the definition of gravel. Let's go. Let's smash this gravel event. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my experience from the Dirty Reaver, both the highs and the lows, and there are many. So this is me rolling out at the start, and well, you can pretty much see what's happening, but more on that later, and there is a long way to go. A little bit about myself, I'm an amateur and distinctly average triathlete. I do also do some road racing, some crit racing, time trialing, and so on, all with minimal success, but I have a great time doing it, and I genuinely enjoy riding a bike. I've never done a gravel event before, but I have put a fair bit of time into training on my gravel bike in the Peak District, so I feel ready to tackle this sort of event. Ability-wise, my FTP, if that's how you want to measure it, is around 360 to 370 watts. I'm 89.99999 kilos, and I'm probably more of a diesel engine than I am a sprinter, but my three to five minute power isn't bad. So I was hoping that these credentials would serve me well on gravel. That was until the starter said, go. Now this event is listed in capitals as not a race, but when you still on the start line and there are elite riders in skin suits and many people who identify as gravel pros, <laughs> along with seeing that there was a 3k neutralized rollout, I think we were all pretty much in agreement that particularly towards the front it is a race. Now, I knew that I wouldn't be competing for the win at this sort of thing. I wanted to use it as a real physical test to see what I could do over an eight, nine, 10 hour ride, practice all the things that I do in the triathlon world, such as excessive fueling, poor bike handling, and peeing on the move. But man, was I blown away by how hard this race started. We were set up in groups of around 50. I was at the back of the front group and I just immediately got dropped. I wasn't pushing especially hard, but I could see how far the road the leaders were getting already. And I just knew that I wasn't gonna get there even if I tried really hard but I did hope I'd be seeing some of those later on the day so over the time in chip start and here we go this is insanity it started so hard we're still in the neutralized section it's not even a race yet or at all unreal I want a really good physical performance today and that performance does not start with me doing half an hour threshold so I am just easing into this we've not even gone past the time in chip marks I'm really taking it easy and I'll find some groups when it starts just letting people blow past me i also lost 200 places i'm trying to convince myself that surely not everybody is doing 200k not everybody's riding at that pace all the way around because i thought i wasn't bad on a bike but the line is getting blown away i might not have world tour legs but i do have a plan and i'm determined to stick to the plan so that plan is to maintain my power on the climbs at no more than 280 watts ish and then on the flats keep it around 200 but really focus on trying to ride fast pacing climbs evenly getting aero when i can and so on like now i could surge on and just follow these wheels but i know it's only going to bite me in the arse later on in this ride i do a lot of individual time trial efforts amateur triathlon is essentially that i know that if i put too hard now i will lose loads more time later on so just letting those wheels go and sticking to the plan is a big help to me it's hard it's difficult to not chase those people but i know i've been in the position before where it's so hard later on morning. 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 so british it hurts i know this is my friend chris now he is built like naro Quintana, so he obviously climbs faster than me but we do a lot of training together he's a good yardstick i know how he rides i know he's pacing it as well so we'll see plenty more of chris the rest of the day so this sort of thing is as much an eating competition as it is a bike riding competition so i'm half an hour in i'm just starting eating some stuff don't care what it is jelly beans jelly babies chews whatever having a sip of drink just getting some stuff down me because there's a long way to go this is probably going to be a nine or ten day, ten hour day out, and the weather is spitting now. It's forecast to get bad, but we're here for a tough day, aren't we?
after about an hour and a half, I was feeling like I'd settled into it. The riders around me had settled into it. I was feeling more and more comfy the faster we were going. It's more my sort of riding, fast and flowing rather than short and sharp. I was enjoying it. I was hanging on to groups. I was riding with people. My mindset had shifted from this mindset of, oh, I'm just going to be overtaken all day to actually, maybe I can turn this into a decent performance. Let me focus on what I can focus on, stick with these people, enjoy it, and really get down to business and keep pressing on and focus on what I wanted to do today, which was a really good physical performance. Slightly frustratingly, the bits that I was absolutely smashing were the road sections. There weren't very many road sections. Obviously, it's a gravel event and it's a completely pointless skill in this discipline, but I was getting aero. I was finding that the tires I was running, the pressures I was running were more conducive to going slightly faster. That might bite me in the backside later on, as we will see. But yeah, they enabled me to bridge up to a couple of groups that I would have otherwise lost. I've definitely, definitely underestimated how mentally taxing this is. Staying in the right line, not going on the gravelly gravel, trying to stay on the light gravel, like now. <laughs> uh, unzip, zip, glasses on, glasses off. Drink, eat food, don't wipe people out. Oh, it's, it's full on, I'm only about an hour and a half in. But you know, I'm feeling good, but everybody feels good this far in. This ride, or race, or whatever you want to call it, is gonna start at like five or six hours in, I think. I can see my friend Chris just up the road, but I'm not chasing him. I'm pressing on. My strategy is to ride at 270, 280 watts up the climbs and then 200 in between. I'm a bit above that at the minute, but just easing into it. I feel like I've got carbs coming out my ears. Oh, what an adventure so far. The rain feels like it's setting in now. We'll see how we get on. Now we are doing the Dirty Reaver. Dude, look at the state of me. Brilliant. Absolutely loving it. A couple of hours in, I feel like I'm in getting into the groove. I feel like I'm riding the trails a bit better than I was earlier. It's a bit squirmy. I'm getting over the fact that I've left quite a lot of key pieces of equipment, either at home or in the car. The grill mount to put this camera in, a multi-tool, uh, some NRG wax chain lube, all those things that could be important. They're not here, but it doesn't matter because I'm here and I'm pedaling as hard as I can. Well, not, not, you know, not quite yet. <laughs> We'll save that for a bit. Yeah, going good. The rain came down, the mud came up. This is the Dirty Reaver. I was really having a massive mindset shift here. I'm working in groups, I'm holding the wheels. I'm feeling like this is becoming a bit more of a race now. Once you're sort of two or three hours in, fueling and strategy becomes more of a factor. I'm riding with people who are closer to my ability. It is going well. Let's get stuck in, let's go racing. Annoyingly, I've just dropped off that group. I need to stop for a nature break, which is what I'm doing now, multitasking. It is grim. Look at the state of me. This is proper Dirty Reaver. The name is in the title. I couldn't tell you how far in we are, what power I've been doing, because my Garmin's like covered in mud. I can't even see it. We'll wipe it in a second though. I'm using this as a good opportunity to detach myself from there and ride at my own pace again. That was probably a little bit too hard and it's just harder to fuel, it's harder to drink, it's harder to do this. All that sort of stuff, but oh wow, the world's a different colour. Oh, what a ride so far. I'll try and jump on some of these guys. What are we in? Two hours 55, 42 miles. Let's go. I'm oh, okay, thanks. Cheers. Anyway, stop messing around. Carry on. I have been taking this fairly seriously, as you can see, but this is my one stop. It's a little bit solitary now. Three and a half hours in, hands cold, body wet, getting tough. You can just see flashing lights in the distance, like some people got the tail lights on. So you can see where the route's going. And you know there are people there. And I've passed a couple of people, but when you're going at just slightly a different pace, it's not good for them to surge on and go with me, or vice versa. It's just, you just gotta ride your own ride. Yo. Hello, you all right? <laughs> Obviously not enough space on this path for both of us. But there you go. You must have missed the briefing when it said, it's not a race. 
Anyway, in the spirit of gravel, I caught up with my friend Chris. Now, we hadn't planned to ride together. In fact, we planned to not ride together. This sort of event, we've all got our own aims and ambitions. So we all sort of set out at the same time, you know, friends. And you just, if you ride together, great. But you're not working with each other for each other. If anybody has a mechanical, you sort of leave each other behind and so on. You know, this is an event that we've all trained for. So everybody's having their own individual effort. But that said, it's really good to ride with a buddy, isn't it? So when I caught him, I was like, happy. It was good to ride with him. So on these little bumps here, I'm surging on a bit to try and keep with him because I can see this is a good group working well together and I want to be in there. I'd much rather be sat on somebody's wheel than pushing the wind myself. But at this sort of event, when you're sat in the wheel, it is absolutely ditched. Like it is filthy. You can't even open your mouth to like breathe properly because it's that muddy. But yeah, it was really good. I felt like we were making great progress and I was having an absolute blast. How are you feeling, Whitey? Hey. How are you feeling? Dirty. <laughs> It is grim, isn't it? We're about, what are we, 90k in, 95k? Yeah. I'm gonna stop at the second feed. I've got some mechanical to do. Just to reattach that. We've got some snacks and carry on. Some terrain, some of it is like really slow. And you're looking for that one line, like that one there, that rolls ever so slightly faster, but it still doesn't feel... No, like, it's not no. No. <sighs> Nobody said it was gonna be easy, did they? I'm feeling okay, I just need to keep on top of the fuel and I think we're about four hours in. Now I'm feeling a lot more comfortable to press on. Now I'm over four hours in. I'm knowing that other people are going to start cracking at some point and I'm feeling really good. My right extension has wobbled loose. I've lost the bolt. That's just one of those things. The only bolts I didn't thread lock. Anyway, if I can hang on to Chris on the hills, we can really get some good work done together. He'll keep me pressing on up the climbs. I can push on on the flats and we can, I think we can actually make some decent progress. So I had that in my mind that I knew we weren't going to ride together for perhaps the whole way. He's a great rider and a good, particularly a good climber and there's a lot of climbing in the last hour and a half to two hours of the route. But I thought if I can stick with him, that would put me in a really good position as long as I'm still riding reasonably within myself. So that's essentially what I am doing here. Working pretty hard, but feeling good and really feeling like we're really getting our teeth stuck into this thing until i got my teeth stuck into it just a little bit too much so we're here on like a woodland path it's quite muddy it's reasonably grippy though in places you can see some places it's dry some places it's wet and i don't know what speed we're doing here maybe 12 13 miles an hour but again this group's just really stretching out so i'm just trying to keep pressing on and keep moving well i'm feeling good i'm feeling like i'm learning how to ride off road famous last words and uh, you know i feel like i'm making progress now i know that, that those riders if we go into a clear or come onto a big gravel road I want to be in that group so I'm trying not to let them go I'm just pressing on and pressing on it's hard to put the power out when you're going over bumpy terrain and it's slipping around but that's part of the challenge but unfortunately we go around this corner and then I come to the next one and there's a gap in front of me there's a rider in the middle I think I squeeze on a little bit just carry a bit too much speed into this corner and bam oh dear I fell all on my right hand side now I bent my rear mech uh, my bars needed readjusting um, I scuffed my right leg was blood all down my leg ripped my jacket like I'd I'd taken a decent fall there so I didn't really know what to do but the next feed station was only about 200 meters away so I, I went there so we're at the second feed stop the first one we've stopped at and it's a bit of like Armageddon it's a carnage isn't it yeah. I'm absolutely filthy yeah it's horrible, isn't it? um, I've just had a, a bit of a tumble just all that way you point that in my direction just on the right side trying to hang on to whitey but there you go Go on the screen. <laughs> he says I'll do it for a video. Anyway, just straight man bars up, but this is going forward to bits. So You I did think, that on purpose. I know I did. I was undoing the bolts on the way around. So yeah. So yeah, but all okay, no nothing broken. My rear mech's playing up, it's probably a mixture of muck yeah. and being smashed and Oh yeah. <laughs> Cooling sand and mud and stuff, so it's to be expected, isn't it? So from here to finish at the 130 it's about 30k isn't it so it's not too far so we're gonna we're gonna roll around to that i think it's still 30k it's probably gonna be an hour and a half yeah at least maybe a bit more than an hour an hour and a half i left a motor tour in the car obviously the group's pretty much come together in terms of the people i've trained for this with and we all seem to be having problems my legs killing my elbows killing my rear mat hanger is bent and cracked i have got a spare one but i'm just gonna try and limp it to the end so the gears all over the place Dean's had a rear puncture, keeps putting air in it. We've not got very far to go to get the 130 done, so I'm just trying to get to the end, but it feels like everything's happening now, so. Oh, these things are sent to test us, and everything I touch is ditched. There's nothing that's clean. It's absolutely a mess. Ah, oh dear. Oh, well, not far to go. 
So from this point, the racing vibes for myself had well and truly ended. My knee was swelling alarmingly fast. My arm was feeling stiff. When you have a fall, like it just knocks the wind out of your sails, doesn't it? And I just didn't want to be riding a bike anymore, really. It was so frustrating because I felt you know, physically good, like I fueled well. And look at the state of the bike and my legs and stuff. And it was just hurting with every pedal stroke. So I knew that there was only sort of 20k left to go. So uh, me and Chris just rolled it in and span it in. Um, my friend Dean and James, they carried on to the 200k but my heart wasn't in it my body wasn't in it my gears were jumping all over the place because my mech hanger was bent it was the right decision but i just feel like you know i feel like it's been a bit of a failure and i feel like i've not done what i've set out to do but the thing is about these remote locations like i couldn't just continue and then be somebody else's problem later on so it's one of those things here we go anyway rolling across the line quarter two in the afternoon so plenty of time left in the day really good event really good supporters marshals and volunteers so thank you very much for all the support but that's how to the finish line so there we go five hours and 20 minutes 75 miles or so not the ride that either of us had planned today whitey was it but no. we've made do haven't we and you even had a good sprint finish at the end yeah so i think we're actually pretty frustrated aren't we because we're both well prepared today's other than you've had no problems whatsoever no you're the only one that's had any problems ride, really. yeah yeah but just lost a lot of time with stopping and stuff so Dirty Reva done dusted. First challenging off road gravel event. Plenty more of these to come. I feel like I've been beat up. I feel like we've been through an ordeal. I need to get bike packed away, go and get showered, changed, and get recovered a bit because that was, that was hard. My elbow is hurting. I'm hoping that's not something more serious, but we'll see how we go. Oh, you look brand new. <laughs> you look a million dollars. <laughs>